everyone in here so i recently got access to github copilot chat and in this video I wanted to try it out for the first time and show you some examples of uh, how i've used it um, if you don't know github copilot chat is their natural language a kind of interface to using github copilot within visual studio code in order to get access to it you need to in, uh, get sign up to a waitlist which i've been on for a while and then you get an invite sent through but i've just enabled it so i've got some code open here and i wanted to talk through a little bit you need to install the insiders edition of visual studio code within that then you enable the github copilot nightly which i've already gone ahead and done and then we get this little um, extra menu bar over in the side so we kick on of copilot chat and we've got this kind of interface saying i'm your copilot and i'm here to help you get things done faster thanks very much i can identify issues explain and even improve code so it's being very boastful in the first instance isn't it but um i've opened up some old code here this is actually my advent of code solutions and the reason i've chosen this is because I can't remember most of what was done in it, and they're slightly obfuscated. They just uh, talk about answers to the questions rather than explaining anything. There's no comments or anything like that. So fairly poorly written code, rushed code for these challenges that were done back in December. But I thought that's quite a good example if you're inheriting something that isn't explained very well. So I'm going to uh, try out uh, chat on this and see how it handles it. So... I've selected these two answers there um, and I can I think we get this option in here of copilot yeah okay so I can ask it to explain this so it's saying the function calculates the heaviest contiguous subarray of the input list it does this by iterating over the list and keeping track of the current total when it encounters a zero or reaches the end of the list it compares it to the current total the current total to the heaviest subarrays seen so far and it updates it if necessary. Finally, it returns the heaviest subarray. And that is, uh, as far as I'm aware, the correct solution. So this is day one of the advent of code, so it's a slightly easier question, one of the easier questions. Um, and if I actually pull up the website, on day one, you will see that what we're dealing with is actually a list, as um, Copilot was talking about, and we are returning total every time we encounter a break in the list. So it explains fairly well um, what's going on. This is the part two function calculates the sum of three heaviest non overlapping contiguous subarrays of the input list. It does this by iterating over the list and keeping track of the current total. When it encounters a zero or reaches the end of the list, it compares the current total with the heaviest subarrays seen so far and updates them if necessary. Finally, it returns the sum of the heaviest sub subarrays. And again, I'm expecting that that is a fairly decent interpretation. So if I just quickly read over this and then we'll summarize. So yeah, basically um, we are looking for the top three weights in this and then sorting them and returning some of them. So that's fairly some of those top three. So see, this is the thing that I quite like and I've seen in a couple of places already uh, when it's talked about my code is that it seems to be complementing it a little bit. Um, overall, these functions provide efficient solutions to the problems that they are designed to solve. Thanks very much, GitHub Copilot. That's really uh, nice of you to say. They use a simple and intuitive approach that's easy to understand and implement. Uh, I mean, GitHub Copilot is really seeing my praises there. That's very, very not kind of it. Um, I'm going to ask it here. You can see we, I was actually going to ask this anyway. But can you suggest any improvements to the code? The code looks well written and efficient. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. <laughs> I'm just going to put GitHub Copilot on my CV um, when I apply for jobs now, because uh, if it's if it if it compares my code to everyone's in the world and believes it's efficient and decent, then uh, that's great. So it's saying I could use a list comprehension instead of a loop for getting the data, which is weird because it does use a list comprehension at the moment, doesn't it? And it's saying that the part two function could be made more readable by using a variable to store the length of the heaviest list. All right, so it's literally suggesting that we have a heaviest len variable and we insert that instead of the len command that I'm using at the moment, which is, where's that heaviest len? 
That doesn't even look like it's used. What is it used? It's not used. That is the worst improvement. So you're saying we should insert heaviest len and then you don't make any other changes. I don't really see how that's an improvement. That seems like a fairly rubbish um, suggestion to me. So it's saying that we should perhaps put this uh, main in a main function to uh, method to make it more modular. Fair enough, they're minor suggestions. It's saying there they're minor suggestions, but it can make the code more readable and maintainable. Fair enough, okay. So another interesting thing that we can do here is actually start the chats within the editor. So if we, we can ask it here, can you refactor this? Sure, what you'd like me to refactor? More concise, maybe. Did it actually do anything there? I didn't even see. I mean, that looks wrong again. It's making a lot of suggestions that I don't think will work. We can check whether or not that is wrong by then testing my answer. So I've already written unit tests for this, and that's one of the things that um, Copilot can help you with. Copilot chat can help you with as well. So you can say, can you write tests for this, please? Um, I've already written some. So if I undo the changes that it made there, run the tests. So if I run this, my PyTest works fine. This is on the day two answer. Let's try what they suggested. And it's a it's incorrect. <laughs> That's just not going too well for Copilot at the minute. It's making some suggestions which help. <laughs> the actual code refactoring is just wrong in a lot of places, which is not helpful. So what I might do now is jump to one of the later ones because that one's fairly simple. So day 11 is the last one. I really have no clue what was going on with this when I created it. So let's see what it thinks of this. Let's explain this, thank you. Now, one thing I will say about this is that it's quite verbose in what in its explanations. They are like a human would probably come back with a better summary quite quickly. You can obviously scroll around and pick up on the points after the fact and dig into the thing, into the particular point that you're interested in. But I don't know that it's useful to hit somebody with a huge um, explanation like that straight away. Okay, so actually this summary at the bottom is better. Overall, this code prevent, provides a simulation of a group of monkeys performing operations on a stack of integers. It uses object-oriented programming to represent the monkeys in operations and provides modular and extensible approach to simulate the monkey's behavior. Again, GitHub Copilot, I am loving you, the way you talk about my code. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. So, I mean, that look, without looking through this again and uh, spending a lot of time, it does look like that's what's going on. Monkeys are, yeah, so monkeys are holding a stack of things with worry items that have particular values in them. Now, one thing I found um, is that it will not talk about anything but code in here. So let's, let's say, um, let's say, what do you think? of Elon Musk. Elon Musk? Elon Musk. Sorry, but I can only assist with programming related questions. What would a good snack be for a programmer? Mm. Oh, okay. It's gone a bit more depth there. I'm not capable of finding opinions discussing topics that are related to programming. Okay. Oh, look at that. However, it's important for programmers to have, maintain a healthy diet and stay hydrated to ensure optimal performance and productivity. That is true. Oh, wow, well, it's actually given us some suggestions. Snack options for progr programmers include fresh fruits, nuts, yogurt, granola bars, and vegetables with hummus. Oh, no, that, no, not hummus. Get out, man. That's horrid. Um, it is also important to drink plenty of water throughout the day to stay hydrated. This is what my wife tells me. Uh, and it's also got another question there. So digging in things, what are some good practices for maintaining focus and productivity while programming? 
Break tasks into smaller manageable chunks. Use management system. Take breaks. Eliminate distraction. Practice good ergonomics. Stay hydrated and nourished. This is interesting because it's saying it's an only, it can only assist with programming related questions, but it construes these as programming related questions. So it's actually kind of interesting these uh, answers that it's giving here. This seems really impressive. Like this is really useful. Being able to ask a question, being able to get suggestions or snacks. Come on, like that's that's worth its weight in gold. I'm going to be really interested in seeing what people were able to do with this. I think this is going to accelerate um, what people can do, especially if you're like a solo developer, having this kind of advanced pair programming going on at, at the side is uh, really useful. It's obviously not going to replace us. We still need the kind of hands-on expertise that a developer has to be able to solve problems in order to get uh, tasks done. Some of these smaller ones, it's obviously made suggestions that don't work and it's just asserted that they're true, which is not helpful when you're programming. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, brief kind of exploration useful. Hopefully you get access to GitHub Copilot chat soon. Um, if you enjoyed this and consider subscribing to the channel, giving it a thumbs up, I would love to have you along for the ride. And I will speak to you soon in a new video. All right, bye for now. Bye.